everyone and welcome back after the holidays. I hope you're all feeling refreshed and ready to learn. We're going to start off this half term by learning about money. Now, the money that we're going to be learning about isn't the money that we use in Qatar. The money we use in Qatar are called real, is the notes, and dirham is the coins. We're going to learn about the money that they use in the UK, like in England. And the reason for that is because in Qatar, we don't really use coins very much. We use notes a lot, the paper money, but we don't use the coins a lot. So we need to learn the UK money so that we can learn how to use the coins and the notes. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by looking at some of the words that we'll be using this week. So a coin is money that is made of metal. It is usually round and made of gold, silver, bronze, or a mixture of these metals. So maybe it will be gold and silver. So a coin is a small round money. A note is money that is made of paper. Notes are worth more than coins and are usually rectangles. So if you have lots of coins and lots of notes, the notes will be worth more than the coins. So in any money, in English money, uh, Qatari money, American money, we call the coins, the little ones that are made of metal, and the notes are the ones made of paper. Now the money in England is called pounds. We use reals, they use pounds. So we call that the unit of money used in the UK or in England. And it can also look like this. Do you see the red symbol there? It looks a little bit like a backwards or a little bit like a backwards three or like a capital letter E, but it's a little bit squiggly. Do you see that line or that sign? We say that that is pound. Our last word is pence. This is a smaller unit of money used in the UK. We can also call it P for short. Do you see the red letter P? So in English money, the pounds are the bigger monies and they use, they use the pound sign and the pence are the smaller money and they use the P. Are we ready to have a look and see what the pounds and pence look like? Okay, very good, let's have a look. So here we have one penny. This could also be called 1p. Have a look. What shape is it? What colour is it? And what picture is on the front? Our next coin is the 2 pence. We can also call this 2p. Remember, p is short for pence. What shape is it? What colour is it? And what picture does it have on it? Talk to a grown-up at home about these. You don't need to write them down. Our next coin is a five pence. What do you think we'll call this for short? That's right, 5p. Have a look at the shape have a look at the colour and have a look at the picture. Each coin has a different picture. Our next coin is a 10 pence coin. What will we call this for short? You're right, 10p. Have a look at the shape, the colour and the picture. Our next coin is a 20 pence coin. We call this 20p. This one has a different shape to the others. Have a look at how many sides it has. Have a look at the colour and have a look at the picture. Our 
Next, we have a 50 pence or 50p. Again, it's got a different shape. Have a look at the shape, the color, and the picture. Here we have a one pound coin. Remember, we can write one pound like this. This coin has two colors. Have a look at the colors, the pictures, and the uh, shape. Lastly, we have a two pound coin. Again, there's two colors on this one. Have a look at the shape, the colors, and the pictures. Look at these coins. Can you describe them? What about them is the same? And what about them is different? Talk to a grown up at home. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at matching these equal amounts. So in each box, we have some coins. We need to add them all up and see how much it comes to. So we're going to do this all together. So let's start with this first box here. We have two plus one plus five. Can we do that together? Two plus one plus five. Well, we know two plus one is three. Three plus five, I'll put the big number in my head. Five, six, seven, eight. So here we have Eight. Eight what? Very good. Eight P. We always have to write the P if we're doing money. Let's have a look at the one underneath. We have a two, a one, a one, a one, and a one. This one will be a bit easier to add. We have two plus one plus one plus one plus one. So we have two plus, we'll just put a finger up for these one. Two plus one plus one plus one plus one. How many do we have all together? Very good, we have six P. Let's have a look at these ones on the right. We have a five, and a one. Let's add these together. Remember, we're adding because we need to find the total. We need to find how much all together. Five in my head, one on my hand, counting up. Five, six. We have six P. Our last one, we have two and two and two and two. So that's two plus two plus two plus two. Now there's an easy way to do this, isn't there? We can use our skip counting. Two, four, six, eight. Eight P. Now let's match these up. We have a six P here and six P here. And we have 8p here and 8p here. So we need to first look at how much is in each square, write the total at the top, and then match up. Okay, so I hope you all have your pencil and paper. For question one, we're going to have a look which of these amounts are equal to 15p. So just like in the last picture where we counted how many were in each box, 
you have to do this with box A, box B, and box C. I want you one of them, or maybe more than one, we'll have to count all of them and check, will be equal to 15p. Which ones? I want you to pause the video and find the answer. Question two. Which amounts are equal to 35p? So some of these boxes will be equal to 35p. I want you to use your adding to find out how many are in each box. Have a look at the coin to see if there's a number on it. Some of them might have the number in uh, numbers and some of them might have them in words. If you're not sure how much the coin is, Rewind the video and have a look at the first slides where I show you all the coins. Then I want you to find which boxes equal 35p. Pause the video now while you finish question two. Question three, which amounts are equal to one pound and 50p? So which of these are equal to one pound and 50p? I forgot to tell you, when we get to 100p, that becomes one pound. So you could have 99p, but then once you get to 100p, we wouldn't say you have 100p, we would say you have one pound. Then if you had one more penny, it would be one pound and one p, and then one pound and two p one pound and three p, one pound and four p. And then when you got to one pound and 99 p, the next one would be two pounds. So have a look which amounts are equal to one pound and 50 p. Our last question today is question four. Tam thinks that the box A and box B are equal. Is she correct? explain your answer. So count how many are in uh, box A and count how many are in box B. Now remember, you're not counting the coins. For box A, you're not counting one, two, three. And for box B, one, two, three, four, five. You need to look at how much each coin is worth. What is the value of the coin? It's not just how many because having 50p is much more than having 1p. We have to be adding them together to find the value, not the number, the value. So for question four, is Tam correct? Are these both equal? Explain your answer. When you're finished, you can take a picture of your work and upload it onto your Dojo portfolio. I hope you've enjoyed learning about money today and I'll see you tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.